Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good afternoon, welcome you all for this uh, uh, next lecture on the inorganic chemistry of life, uh, principles and perspectives. In the previous uh, class I have talked to you about the structures of the uh, proteins, uh, all four different structures of the proteins. Then I talked to you about the nucleic acid, nucle nucleotide, nucle nucleoside and nucleic acid and nucleic acid structures like A, B, Z and also talk to you about the uh, base pairing, uh, the Watson Crick kind of base pairing which indeed stabilizes the uh, double helical structure and then also have focused on how a protein is being synthesized by the uh, biological system uh, and which through a phenomena uh, called the uh, central dogma of uh, molecular biology that is DNA to mRNA to protein. And then I also talk to you about the post translation modification after the protein is being synthesized, the protein structure, tertiary structure, quaternary structure is taking place. Then there are certain unwanted units which are present in that are removed and there are some post translational modifications which are even covalent in nature, something like acetylation, phosphor, phosphorylation O methylation, uh, hydroxylation, many of these kinds of things. Uh, also talk to you about the how this uh, C terminal and terminal connectivity is being uh, made, all these aspects uh, are being talked in the previous class. But we have not looked at how a metalloprotein is uh, synthesized. So, let us look at uh, the how the metalloprotein is synthesized. See the, for um, uh, making the metalloprotein, uh, it is not that metal ion is coming along with the protein synthesis, it is the protein is first synthesized and then metal ion is being introduced into the protein. Okay. So, uh, there are various ways of these ones, the proteins which uh, contain a variety of uh, uh, metal ion as cofactors. We have seen uh, the iron, we have seen copper, we have seen nickel, we have seen manganese, so many different kinds of uh, uh, cofactors you can call it as metal based cofactors. The, the, all these play important role uh, in either the structure of the protein stabilizing or the catalysis of the protein. So, they are involved as a structural and catalytic uh, ingredients of the, uh, of the uh, protein uh, as a metal center. And I have already explained to you earlier how this metal center, this metal center is connected to the side chains of the protein to form a coordination complex. So, that means when the metalloprotein is formed straight away the coordination complex is not formed, metal pro protein is initially synthesized then followed by uh, introducing the metal ion into this. Okay. So, uh, there are several metalloproteins, metalloenzymes in our body. In fact, uh, uh, almost uh, one third, a bit more than even one third of the proteins that are there in the human body are all metalloproteins. So, that means there is a huge amount of uh, uh, reactivity, functionality, responsibility taken by the metalloproteins and metalloenzymes. Uh, uh, generally, there is a there is a feel for 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 us to ignore the inorganic parts in the biological systems, but this particular course will bring to you how important is the inorganic part uh, in this. Uh, so, so uh, there are a variety of examples hemoglobin, plastocyanin, carbonic anhydrase. these are just for a few and many examples we have already seen earlier and many more will come later on. Now, let us look at how such a metal ion is is entering into the protein to make the protein into uh, a metalloprotein or to make the protein into a metalloenzyme. So, metalloprotein and metalloenzyme. Okay. Uh, so, these are something where you can say you have your uh, ribosomal uh, mRNA and which gives the peptide synthesis which we have seen just a while ago uh, in the previous lecture. 
ok. So, and this gives the, uh, the unfolded and the metal free one of the possibilities is that the metal can be inserted. So, there are three ways uh, paths shown path going via top, path going straight, path going through this. There are three different ways by which we can uh, think of the introducing the uh, metal ion into this particular proteins. So, the protein synthesis metal ion insertion and then goes into the unfolded but metal bound then goes into the uh, total uh, folded structure. So, the structure which are shown like this are called unfolded, the structures which are shown like this are called the folded. So, uh, this protein is same as this protein, but structure is not the same. So, in other words the uh, primary structure of this and the primary structure of this is same, but the tertiary structure of this and tertiary structure secondary structure of this and secondary structure of this they are not the same. So, that is one way you can make the metal of protein. So, the folded holo, holo means metal ion present, holo means metal ion present. So, folded holo protein or metal bound protein. Let us look at the other one the protein and while protein is synthesized in the vicinity the metal ion is brought and the metal ion can get into the folding process may induce the folding process and the folding will take place. So, that can also be released. Okay, uh, and then the uh, the folding and release folded apoprotein, and then you make the uh, put the metal ion into this, or you can take uh, the uh, holo protein metal ion removal that is shown by this uh, dotted line. So if you show by this dotted line, you'll get the apoprotein, and from this side the protein protein folding will still give the protein, but not in the uh, metallated form. So, this is called apoform, apoform plus metal insertion gives the final form. So, this is the final form of metal of protein and this is where the metal uh, the protein is synthesized. So, between protein is synthesized and the metal of protein is uh, formed you have these three paths which are shown. Okay. So, now what we need to remember now is that the metal ion is added after the protein is synthesized or during the protein is synthesized which will induce the metal folding or complete folding would have also occurred then followed by introducing the, uh, uh, the, the metal ion. So, there are three different possible ways, there are three different possible ways by which the metal protein uh, can be synthesized from the simple protein. Then other things that one need to remember at this stage is the protein having the metal ion in it is referred as a holo protein. The holo protein minus the metal ion is referred as the apoprotein. So, here after in future we will be referring to proteins in the form of holo protein, protein in the form of apoprotein. Apoprotein means the metal ion is removed. In fact, one can do that even by uh, using some chelating agents you can remove that too. So, why is it removed? Removed because uh, to do certain kind of a reactions. Suppose you want to reintroduce a new metal ion or introduce another uh, type of a metal ion into this. So, various, va various things can be done in order to find whether that particular metal ion is really important or not important. So, so this gives a, a overall uh, feel as how and what are the different ways by which the metal ion can be introduced uh, to make the metal protein. Of course, if it shows a function it is called metal enzyme uh, in that. Let us look at uh, one uh, example here. Uh, in this particular example it is a bit different kind of an example. Uh, the example is shown for the heme. So, uh, for the hemoglobin synthesis. So, the in the hemoglobin synthesis there are many uh, previous steps which we are not showing that. You take the protoporphobinlin uh, 3, uh, this is one other stage, and this is converted into protoporphyrin 9, and this is the form in which it is present in the hemoglobin. So, the protoporphyrin 9 is the one which is present in the form of uh, the heme, uh, the porphyrin that we see. And this is coming from the pre precursor of this. Okay. 
and this is still not having any metal ion in this. So, now this into this you introduce the metal ion. So, how do you introduce the metal ion? In this particular case there is something called ferro chelates. So, uh, so the ferro chelates is because, because the ion and then uh, bringing to make the chelate formation of this and that will be introduced into the protoporphyrin 9 and once the ion is introduced the protoporphyrin 9 plus iron is called heme. So, we have uh, the <coughs> metalloprotein uh, is equal to protein plus metal ion. Okay. So, the metal ion can be added Uh, at polypeptide level or oh, it can be added uh, uh, in a apoprotein that means uh, it is fully folded or it can be uh, unfolded but complete protein. So, there are different types the uh, uh, different stages where it can be introduced at simple polypeptide uh, level or it can be at the um, apoprotein that means already fully folded and regular protein is formed into which it can go or oh, other possibility is you have a complete protein, but not folded enough to have the structure uh, into this as well it is possible. Sorry. Okay, you have uh, a, a protein plus metal ion. Uh, as integral part. Of the protein. Okay. So, these are uh, some of the things that uh, we have looked at. Uh, in case of uh, heme proteins, so in case of heme uh, proteins, so heme is uh, uh, porphyrin plus iron. Okay. So, there are different kinds of porphyrins and the different kind of porphyrins are present in different kind of heme proteins. So, with that we will see whenever the future discussions come on that particular thing. Okay. Uh, so, having seen uh, this the proto uh, porphobilin 3 to proto, proto porphyrin 9 to uh, heme by using the ferrochelates. Okay, and as you can see finally, you will form the entire protein which is a functional part of the protein. So, where the, uh, the protein in the structured form and the heme and, and the iron present in this. So, you can see in different ways of the same uh, protein. In this context that we need to remember are two aspects. One is uh, holoprotein other is uh, the apoprotein. Holoprotein is uh, protein plus the metal ion, apoprotein is metalloprotein minus metal ion. I also mentioned to you it is uh, possible by using some kind of a chelators you can selectively remove the metal ion and then to make the apoprotein. The other way you can take the apoprotein add the metal ion you can get the uh, metalloprotein too. Okay, now, uh, let us look at uh, uh, the other aspect of it you have a protein you have a metal ion 
so binding through their side chains uh, etc so therefore this is a uh, primary coordination sphere okay so that means some amino acid uh, uh, 5 then amino acid uh, 20 then amino acid uh, 40 then amino acid maybe 70 uh, maybe amino acid uh, uh, 110 whatever so different uh, levels of the amino acids are bound to this and forms a, a, a coordination complex and now as I said earlier the uh, properties of this ma ma metal ion N plus is very much different from the metal ion in water or the metal ion in any of the uh, in vitro kind of a systems because the protein applies its own conformational restrictions its own uh, the hydrophobic hydrophilic uh, regions uh, influence and thereby it influences the uh, total properties including redox properties of the uh, metal centers of these ones. Okay, now, if you want to claim this AA5 is really bound, how do we know that the AA5 is the one of the directly bound amino acid in this? AA5 must be there in the primary structure, there is no doubt, but how do you say that the AA5 is bound or AA40 is bound to metal center? The simplest way is you change this AA5 from one whatever be the amino acid there to a different kind and then uh, look at whether this protein is stable, whether the protein is functional. So, if the answers is yes, the protein is stable, protein is functional, functioning the same way as that, that means certainly AA5 is not bound. On the other hand, if your answer were to be that the A5, uh, uh, this uh, when you remove this into a different amino acid, because the different amino acid do, do not have the same kind of a side chain, therefore will not be binding the same, and the the uh, rate reaction catalysis will not be the same because you have changed the uh, the binding partner, which is not binding also in fact. So, in such a case the function will change. If both the stability and the function of the protein changes, so obviously you can say that particular amino acid is absolutely essential. So, how do we uh, do that kind of a change? So, to do that kind of a change, changing one amino acid to other is referred as the uh, mutation, it is called mutation. Okay. Uh, in fact, in the previous example, in the previous example, I can change this by changing the corresponding codon. I can change this by corresponding codon. Codon is a triplet uh, pair, triplet, triplet uh, from uh, the, the corresponding nucleotides. I can change this one, I can change this one or I can change more than one. So, therefore, if I change one at a time, it is called single mutation. If I change more than one, it is uh, double or multiple mutations. So, mutations could be uh, single, double or multiple. So, I can change only a codons for one amino acid, I can change codons for two of them. I can change the codons for several of them. So, uh, so this uh, mutation. So, by doing this, I will get a protein with a change in the amino acid in that particular position. So, let us look at the next slide in this con connection. So, you can do uh, so making specific changes in DNA sequence by uh, the mutation. Okay. Uh, so, you would like to change that. Uh, uh, should reflect in the protein synthesis. Okay, uh, this is uh, uh, go, this goes through different processes called uh, sequence insertion, sequence deletion, sequence addition. I am not going to go into the details of all this because these kind of things you will study if you have interest in molecular biology course. But all that I would say is all these are the kinds of operations that need to be done. 
uh, with uh, the uh, uh, DNA. So, those operations so, let us just see suppose you are looking at uh, the single mutation one mutation and it is at a particular uh, a particular position it is called site targeted mutagenesis. Okay, at a particular site you target at a particular site. So, this is your uh, genome or DNA part of it and you are interested in this particular code codon or uh, 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 region. So, that is what is referred as the gene X whatever we think is that and you select this one and this is ready now then you take a plasmid and you cut the plasmid here this with this line and this line and you got a open plasmid. So, from a circular plasmid you got a non circular plasmid or a linear plasmid and this piece is out. In the position of the piece you put this guy. So, this gene what you got. So, this gene should have information what you wanted to uh, synthesize that triplet code should be there. So, you want to synthesize a particular amino acid, you want to replace a particular amino acid in the previous case then you, you cut that pore and put this new piece. Now, it is integrated into this. Now, so you have the plasmid you have integrated the G integrated the whole gene with the modification and that is now is uh, uh, put into the uh, some live bugs for example, E coli. So, you can introduce this into E coli and express the uh, express the system then you will get to express the protein. The protein that comes out will have the modification in this particular thing. So, in a site targeted uh, mutagenesis case you will have so one uh, with this process you will get at that particular site the amino acid is changed uh, at that particular site and this is referred as site targeted uh, it's called site targeted mutagenesis. So once you synthesize this, this can be synthesized by using the uh, E. coli cells. You put this plasmid uh, into the E. coli. So these whole operations are called genetic engineering operations. What I have mentioned is very uh, little portion of this at the tip of the iceberg not anything details. Somebody who is interested in this more details they should approach a biochemistry bio, bio uh, molecular biology course more, more precisely speaking. Okay. So, you have a, a genome you select the genome where you have this particular modification is there and then put this uh, uh, the gene into integrate into a plasmid which is already cut and this plasmid uh, uh, this plasmid which is integrated with this gene X uh, is, is, uh, is introduced into the live cells and then allow the uh, expression to take place okay. and that will give the uh, protein uh, synthesis aspects as well. Okay. So, thus in this entire uh, process of uh, what I have been doing in the last several hours of lectures is that elements uh, which are of essential elements okay. and uh, of course, we have looked at the essentiality, um, the essentiality is looked at and uh, uh, we have worked out all the criteria. So, essentiality and uh, uh, deficiency and excess syndrome. Then we have looked at uh, um, the uh, element or ion absorption 
by intestines intestines we looked at uh, uh, mutual uh, interactions uh, between the elements absorbed okay this is uh, um, antagonistic and synergistic okay um, then we have looked at the the necessary uh, dosages okay of uh, essential trace and ultra trace ultra trace elements then we started looking at how these are uh, bound uh, and prior to that we have also looked at why uh, these elements and not the other, uh, why these elements are so specific, why only uh, these elements are chosen by nature and there we have looked at variety of um, coordination characteristics, stabilities and liability aspects are important and I am still to explain this uh, stability liability which I will be doing in the next uh, uh, lecture uh, in any case. So, and uh, coordination characteristics, stability and then we talked about how these are bound through the side chains, how these are bound through side chains and then we brought the concept of uh, uh, the metalloprotein as uh, metalloprotein as a, a, a metal ion complex inside a protein, metal ion complex inside a protein and then we try to say that the simple metal ion in water versus metal ion in protein. These are absolutely different, the properties of the metal ions are very well modified by the protein as compared to the metal ion and that is why different proteins would bring different kinds of reactivities to the metal ions. Therefore, we have a huge variety of metalloproteins and metalloenzymes functioning in this. Then I have taken uh, to explain you these um, amino acids. Uh, proteins and peptides, amino acids, uh, proteins uh, okay, in, in between peptides and proteins and their structures and we have also looked at uh, uh, nucleic bases, nucleosides nucleotides and nucleic acids uh, and their structures. So, we have looked at all of these, uh, then we looked at the 
protein synthesis and then we looked at the metalloprotein synthesis where the metal ion is introduced into the protein that is being synthesized and uh, then brings the property in different various ways. And also now we talked about the hollow protein versus apoprotein or protein, then we have talked about the mutagenesis. So, okay, these are all various aspects that uh, encompass us to understand the basic uh, conceptual ways of this uh, role of inorganic elements in biological systems in the form of uh, inorganic chemistry of life. And in the next class, I will talk to you about uh, the um, stability, liability, reactivity, all of these aspects are the metal ions when they are there. So, far we have only looked at the biological side, then we will look at the inorganic chemistry aspects of side. Thank you very much.